Never underestimate the power of being willing to act when the time is right. Yeah, y'all, y'all taught me pretty well. I appreciate that. Lydia just looks over. Of course we did. And then she looks at Millie. So how are you doing, dear? Did you, were you able to get in any rest or maybe at least clear your head a little bit? Certainly enough rest. Thanks, darling. And uh, appreciate, again, your hospitality overnight. Of course, of course. No, you are always welcome here. You're so kind. And likewise, you in my home. And then speaking of, she'll like kind of pull a little envelope out of her purse and pass it over to Cole because Cole had requested season tickets for the moms. Very sheepishly pulls it behind his back to the other arm and oh, look what I got. I forgot it's an early birthday present for you, Roma. And uh, I don't know what's actually inside it, but I pretend with all the confidence in the world <laughs> that I had this fully pr- planned out and I hand it over. Yeah, I think that the theater is pretty much modern enough that most people have, you know, season passes in the form of digital tickets. And so Millie has had to go out of her way to basically, like, hand-write season passes for the moms. You know, in that way that you do for adults who are just a little bit out of touch and you're not sure that if they could do the whole, like, scan a barcode on their phone thing. (laughs) That's fair. Roma lights up considerably and she says, thank you, and then looks to you, Millie. Thank you for this. Oh, it's all Cole's doing, I assure you. I turn my back and give a two thumbs up to Millie. We haven't seen a good production in a while. Well, you know I'm all about productions. Speaking of, this breakfast looks like it's becoming quite the production. Uh, Could you use an extra set of hands? Certainly, we're just... I think I have all of it done. We just need to work on getting everything played. We should have the table set with enough spots for everything. Well, it's a very impressive spread, I must say. Yeah, it's like eggs and bacon and turkey bacon and everything you could want for breakfast with uh, quite a few very tasty-looking vegan options. You're just so thoughtful. I love it here. And Millie will go about helping to set things up and set things out and just generally trying to be useful and not in the way. And we should have more people joining soon, but it might be a minute. Sometimes these timing things are tricky. That's Roma was one saying that. Fair enough. That's always the trick with breakfast, isn't it? Just getting everything done at the same time and still warm when people are ready to eat it. Lydia responds, Oh, absolutely. But it's always so satisfying when you get it just right. I imagine you slowly start to hear just rumblings of downstairs and things of kids and everything just starting to pour in. Once that smell kicks in, you know... Yeah, you, the, the smell kicks in, and Millie, you notice Lydia's kind of pushing some of the vegan and, like, other food options sort of back a bit so the kids can't get to it. And she'll lean over to Cole and say, Don't worry, we've got a ne- we have another round coming after the kids get theirs. Bunch of rascals. Well, you know, growing kids need to eat, but... She looks to Roma, and Roma continues... But the day that's coming, you'll want your strength. Make sure you eat well this morning. And this can probably be around when, Angel, you come in after your shower. You feel so much better. Yeah, her curls are all wet and hanging loose and... (sighs) Alright. Well, I feel like a person again. Wasn't there something going on today? It was a memorial for Cass, which I understand our uh, stranger is meant to be at. He seems like he has plans. I'm sure he does. Did Roma and Lydia potentially hear that? They heard that, and you just hear Roma scoff. As I mentioned, it sounds like he has plans. I didn't say they were good ones. 
Angel just kind of like reaches out a hand absently, trying to see if it's back yet. 2d6? Just flat 2d6? Yeah. 10. There's a second where it almost flickers and you can feel it, but it's still, it's still not quite there. Damn it. And I think, Millie and Cole, you do see the staff briefly flicker in and out, but it's like that, that connection's not all there. Well, that's alarming. Like I said, he broke whatever connection. That staff is part of my vows. Is it like you can't focus hard enough, or...? No, it's there. It's there. I know it's there, but I can't... It's not responding because my vows are broken. If I had actually broken my vows, it would have forsaken me entirely, and I wouldn't even be able to reach for it, I assume. Kind of sounds like it just needs a bit more convincing. I don't think that's quite how it works. You want to try something? Lydia pipes up. Uh, sometimes broken things just take a while to fix, but that doesn't mean they're going to be broken forever. They always tend to come back when you need them. I just hope it fixes before they come from ahead. Well, maybe Cole's right and it needs some convincing. You said that you have oaths and such. Surely there's something you can do that would be, you know, in line with your oath keeping. Burning down John Statton's house wasn't exactly in line, but he's kind of persona non grata with your group, so it's that's not going to be. An I issue. mean, basically everything she's doing is in line with her group because they want the old men out of power as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, maybe we should just kill an old man. Uh, wait. Uh, anyway, casually kill. How did we go from breakfast to kill an old man? It's been one of those. That is breakfast. Oh, shit. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> little child pops in and says, What's breakfast? Right here. Part of your Timmy eggs. Morning routine. Bacon. All over this table. First meal of the day. <laughs> the most important meal of the day. Eggs. <laughs> Millie gestures very grandly and very awkwardly. Cole grabs a plate that does have food on it on the table, hands it over to Timothy, and, like, turns him around and pushes him out the door. Bye, strange lady! Bye-bye. I love children, but I am very bad at them. <laughs> yeah, no one's really good, honestly. They're weird. I heard that! Shut up, me! He's right! Robo comes up. Perhaps I should move this conversation to another room, because there's about to be a swarm of children in here. Fair. I got a place. I got a place. It's uh, pretty pretty quiet if y'all want to follow me. Angel just grabs a piece of toast. <laughs> That's for breakfast. I move the conversation out to the actual garage, which is kind of like... Cole's Haven, the only place he doesn't really have, like, a room in the house as he's given it up since he doesn't really live there anymore. But they let him keep a project car that he's had since he was 12 in there, ever since he got a small inkling of who his actual parents may have been and what they, like, were seen driving off in. He bought himself a model of that car and he's been working on it since it was, like, 12 years old. So they let him keep it there oh. as just, like, a little project space. Who sold a 12-year-old a car? They bought it for him because they knew he wanted it really bad. Oh, all right. That's much more understandable. Every time you come back, you see there's a box of a couple more pieces that you needed. Yeah, exactly. Like, most recently was an actual flywheel and alternator that was obviously shot, so... Just magically showed up. Anyway, I take y'all out to the garage and... It, it's definitely going to be quieter and more willing to have conversations out here. So why are we killing people? <laughs> yeah, you can still hear the distant sound of life and children. Roma follows bringing, I imagine you, Cole, you have a plate of food and Roma walks out carrying a plate of food and then hands it to Angel. It's not like heaped high, but she's like, he, he doesn't argue with the moms. 
Just that casual, you need more than <laughs> toast. She doesn't argue, she just takes the plate. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Of course, darling, and she gently pats your head. It's a very endearing gesture. I don't know if anyone else could get away with it, but... Angel is very uncomfortable with that. <laughs> Visibly so. She doesn't say anything, but she doesn't know how to take that. It would have been a very gentle, maybe not full contact, but enough to where you could recognize the gesture. Oh yeah, no. It's the gesture itself. <laughs> Millie would probably wait until they were free of parental supervision before being like, so murder. Wait, hold on right there. And right then he just cranks the key to the on position for the car and the radio pops on. It's an ACDC song that's kind of like midway blaring. He turns it down just enough so no one can hear the murder words. Hooray, white noise generator. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay. Now we can talk about murdering people. What are we doing? Why are we killing all of a sudden? Why are we talking about murdering people? We were just trying to get a little bit of hype man action, and now we're off to killing folk. All right, look. What we're doing is in line with what my... what the organization wants. They also don't want the old men in power. That doesn't mean we need to murder them. That also doesn't mean that doing it will fix me vows. I'm just saying that in my experience, when vows are broken, you just have to do like a big grand gesture to make the other person feel better about the relationship. Well, I did burn down Red's house. Probably. Different kind and of And I'm vows. just saying murder is often a great grand gesture. Also, I'm hungry. Or you can just want it bad enough. I saw you flickering it in and out of existence like it's there. It, it wants to show up, but do you want it bad enough? What is bad enough? Ah, uh, well... Bad enough to murder. No, let's not jump to... Come on now. Come on. Hmm. Hey, Cole. Your vampire friend's hungry. Angel, you want to you wanna try something one time? See if it works? See if I get a little bit of a hype action? Try to summon it one more time? Sure. When she says, Sure hits the garage door opener <laughs> and the garage just pops up hop on in I'm sorry yeah just hop on in it's gonna be okay he sits in the car alright fine Angel will climb in confused <laughs> <laughs> Millie is standing there doing like the full Nosferatu with her arm because it's bright outside and she was not prepared and then she's just gonna be like, do you want me in the car? Or like, what's the plan here? I uh, grab a pair of shades that are like on the actual visor of the car and I toss them over like out the, out the window towards Millie. Millie will catch them and immediately put them on. And then I guess climb in the back seat. Turns on the car, revs up. It's, a, it's an old Ford Galaxy 500. It's sort of a muscle car, but sort of doofy looking too. And I just back it up and I go down to the end of the block and just kind of sit there like, all right, this is probably a dumb idea, but if I'm in a mood and I need to figure things out, this is the first thing I try. And I'm going to stomp on the brake. And I, you, you ready to try one more time? You're going to summon that thing one more time, but you're going to want it real bad this time, right? Right. All right. Wait. Do you want to roll to figure someone out to see if you can figure out what the heck he's doing? Or are you just <laughs> going to roll with it? She's just rolling with it. I was going to suggest we need a really good soundtrack for this. It's going to be fun finding that. You can't just type with whatever's on the radio. Oh no, it's a specially curated sound. He has a cassette tape that he has recorded from CDs to cassette because there is no CD player in this thing. Amazing. So what are you playing to hype this up? It was ACDC. Yeah. Zeppelin. It's gotta be Zeppelin for this. Pretty sure it's gonna be the Wanderer song. Anyway. Amazing. Down at the block, I'm just gonna rev the ever-living hell out of this thing, and you're gonna hear the rev limiter just pop, 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 just bouncing, and let off the brake, peeling out down this stupid road. Which obviously I've done plenty of times because you see 
tire tracks right on this this edge of town but i basically take you to a drag and try to get the heart going enough to to give you one more chance to summon that thing i guess roll to lend a hand okay cool millie is full-on woo girl in the back seat like just so delighted to be here how does a natural 11 do Ooh. You get a plus one to your roll that you're about to make. Yay! Is it just the flat 2d6 again? Yep. That's a nine with the plus one. <laughs> this is, does get your blood drumming, and you feel like you should be able to reach out to it, but it's just, it's still... You reach out, and it's almost like you can feel where the connection is, like, fractured, almost. It is also very exciting, but you weren't able to make that connection yet. Mm-hmm. Get to the end of the, the road, but there's a cul-de-sac. It looks like there's just road houses before it gets too crazy. Actually does a full 360 turn, looks over. Is it working? As he's just peeling out 360s. She just punches the dash. No, but a few more donuts than it might. <laughs> I'm not the smartest man, but I try things. You know, I'm just along for the ride and enjoying it every step of the way. There's at least one of the people in one of the houses comes out their back door and he's, they're glaring at you and starts roaring up and down the street at like 7 a.m. on a Sunday. <laughs> Saturday? <laughs> what day is it? It's Sunday. It is Sunday morning. Oh my god. I just lean my head out the window. Sorry, Byron, I don't mean to do this. Just like peel, <laughs> just apologizing as he's doing donuts. Millie's full on like parade waving, like elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. Of course. I can tell that Angel probably looks a little bit dejected and kind of bring the donut to a stop and start inching back towards the house, not actually gassing it. Well, it's a shot better than murder. I'm sorry it didn't work. It's not your fault. It's fine. But since it didn't... No, no, I'm fine. How hungry does Millie look right now? Millie's probably not, like, super bad, but she did expend some power last night. You did eat someone yesterday morning. Yeah, so she's not doing terrible, but, you know, between the the used a little bit of power last night and who knows what the day ahead holds, that wouldn't be a bad idea to eat more. Probably not, unless you need to get a little unhinged in what's, about, in what's coming, but I'll say this is probably around when you get a text from Charlie saying, how are you doing this morning, darling? He's being very sweet to you. Oh, he's moved really quick to pet names. And Millie's just gonna be like, mm, pet names. When you live in the South, literally everyone calls you darling. That's, yeah, that is a fair assessment. Yeah, darling, sweetie, Hun. some people, it, it's, just like a comma or instead of like putting a breath in the sentence it's just like darling sweetie kind of thing well i appreciate that when you're flirting or talking to someone you're interested in if you've used their name you know they say there's nothing sweeter in the world than one's own name just seems like a lost opportunity is all anyways millie is going to send back the emoji of a donut and nothing else well, the stranger's awake. If he sleeps. That's a weird thought. Don't bug it. If he's a he. If he's a, an it. A, a person? A being? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm so confused anymore. There is a person that is part of the stranger, but the stranger is a person possessed by something else. I think Cole just refuses to, like, acknowledge it as a living breathing and maybe it's his own mortality like insecurity but he doesn't acknowledge the stranger as being a creature that's alive you should have sent him a fire emoji 
I'm actually a little chilly, but that's just kind of a state of being when not actively. Anyway, or maybe that's just me. Ah. No, you could send a me and a gift from me too. She just like, Aww. like poses for a picture with one middle finger extended. <laughs> Uh, I think Millie takes that photo and just uses it to add as the the contact photo for Angel, <laughs> but does not pass it on. Oh, that's great. That's very on brand. So I do wonder if there is any at all benefit to him texting me this morning. Should I be trying to distract him today? Should I be trying to draw him away from what he's trying to do? Should I be doing anything with this? Do you know what he's trying to do? Because that information would be right helpful. No. So I ask what his plans are. He sends back a picture of the Krispy Kreme and the lights on. And then just says, want some? Find out what he's doing for the memorial. This is the worst first date I've been on in 50 years. (laughs) And she'll just send back... Be right there. You're not trying to date him. It doesn't matter. I have standards. Anyway, so she texts back, be right there. Honey, I disposed of your last standards. I know. He responds back, why don't we meet at Mountain Hill Park? The view there is lovely. Oh, you little rat bastard. For the players, Mountain Hill Park, it's a little park next to the river where the water there is usually so smooth and still. The reflections are a beautiful place to go. People come from all over to row there. There's some walking trails nearby. There's little, like, pavilion places and little benches. Is that the same park? That's a different park. Oh, that one's okay. in the the one you're thinking's in the middle of a neighborhood. This one's kind of a little bit on the outskirts. Okay, okay. Ignore my outburst then. <laughs> yeah, it'll probably take you about 15, 20 minutes to get there. Oh, good. I love nothing more than going out with a stranger into the middle of nowhere where no one can hear me scream. There are things there and people that live near there, and there will probably be people there. And hiking trails and places to hide bodies. I mean, sure. I mean, there's a body of water right there. (laughs) I know. I know what I'm about. I just worry other people are also about that. (laughs) I guess I'm going to have Krispy Kreme in a park with the enemy. We've pulled up into the driveway now, back at the actual house. It's been roughly that long to get back to the street. Or back down that end of the street. Angel's gonna pop in to see if whomever was going to possibly pop in for a house call has been contacted or showed up yet. Oh, yeah. Well, see, this is a younger woman than the woman whose backyard he popped in the middle of. Mm. And it'll probably take a few minutes, but she can get you nice and stitched up to where you are much more adequately bandaged for the werewolf claws that dug into your arms when he dropped you after you kicked him in the nuts. Yep. And while she's getting those stitches, Angel is, like, focusing on the exact wording of what her vows were at the time that she made them and just, like, repeating them over and over, like, in her head, under her breath, Maybe if I can grab hold of those vows again, maybe it'll fix that break. Who knows how the hell this magic works? It wasn't supposed to be able to break like this. It's not broken, it's just cracked. It's not supposed to be possible. Cole, darling, do you think I could bum a ride? My car is, I think, still at the theater. I've quite lost track of it at this point. That'd be just fine. Where am I, uh, whereabouts am I taking you? Mountain Hill Park. Beyond that, we'll just have to, I guess, just drop me off and I'll figure it out from there. Have you explained out loud to Cole that you're going on a date with the stranger? Was that said out loud? 
Oh yes, Millie is very much agonizing about it as melodramatically as possible. I'm going to have donuts with the enemy in a park. <sighs> I think Cole has in his mind that he's going to be able to at least get eyes on whoever it is, even though it's technically Bart. Just eyes. You are, of course, welcome to stick around and do any spying or whatever you want to do. I would love not being alone with the bad man. I mean, I'd hate to be too much of a third wheel, but I know enough of that area. I could probably hang back and just make sure you weren't, like, you know, deadened. I appreciate that. I would love to not be deadened any further than I currently am. And, you know... He is so cute. It's not his body, though, and that's a little of an ick. Yeah, I think that would be a, a red flag for me. He also uses a glamour, so you're not actually seeing the body. Yeah, you know what Bart looks like. That's not what the stranger looks <laughs> like. But I know. It's sort of like once you know what's inside of a hot dog and you just can't unknow that, you know? I still eat gas station hot dogs. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. Mm. You really don't. Well, again, standards. You hear Lydia from the kitchen. You really don't. <laughs> Just pop. You really don't. Pops her head in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. All beef hot dogs exist. It's not much better, but... Brought worse. Anyway... Food production has just gotten rather horrendous over the centuries. Ugh. Oh, I don't know about all that. Do you want me along? Only if you want to come, darling, and I know you've got a lot you're going through. I mean, I'd be surprised if you didn't know I got out. You did burn the house down. We don't know that it burned down. I just set a fire. There are news reports. Ah, okay. So we do know it burned down. <laughs> Yeah, all right, fair. Yeah. They were able to contain the blaze to the house, but... Oh, good. I don't have to feel guilty. It might have taken a while for it to get reported, because all the people who were supposed to be guarding the house did not want to be the one to have to call it in and deal with the fact that they were the one who reported that they failed to guard the house and it was burnt down. Because they have to deal with the stranger and their boss. <laughs> uh. The look on the dude's face when you just vanished was perfect. <laughs> also slightly frightening, but it was perfect. Well, not like I got anything better going on right now. I will come with you. Delightful. Obviously, I'll try and talk to him alone, but... I don't think it's a bad idea for you to be nearby. I could also... Ooh! You know what we could do is I could just call you and have my phone in the pocket so you can hear what's going on. And I'll go for a hike. Or just hang out on the swing set with your back to them. Nah, she wouldn't be that obvious. But swing set. Angel's hair is pretty, um... Bright red. Unusual. <laughs> it's not common. Talk about a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> With that determination that Angel's coming, Cole puts the car in reverse and pulls back into the road. Oh, that was gonna say, that took a bit because Angel got stitches during that time that they stopped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'll say before you leave, Lydia will pull you aside a little bit, Amelia, and just say, just be careful, dear. Sometimes the things you think you want aren't what they appear to be. Oh, I know. It's such a tragedy. I'm only attracted to red flags, and it turns out... I just don't like that kind of drama. Turns it out I'm like a bull. I'm getting better. Have you ever considered... batting for the other team? I have. And it's gone... mixed successy. Perhaps she'll have more luck there. I know I did, and she looks back to the kitchen where you assume Roma is. Well, maybe if you have any friends to introduce me to when this is all over, I'll consider it. You do have much better taste in people than I do. May not find the perfect one, but find someone you're willing to make it work with. Well, 
all relationships are a little work. Very true. That said, this one might just be beneficial, even if it's not real. Or, you know, fancy. Krispy Kreme in a park, I mean, really. By the way, do you have a sun hat I can borrow? She grabs one off of the peg that you could have sworn wasn't there when you last came through this room. Here, you can borrow this one. It'll look wonderful on you. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you. And thus equipped, poorly, Millie goes on the worst date ever. I have to wonder how useful this is actually going to be. Because you got to think that he knows that this is being put on, right? So any information he gives you is suspect. Sure, but any time he spends giving it to me is time that he's not spending doing something worse. We already got the tether. Sure, but what could he be doing right now? Like tracking down Hess, or tracking down Kyle. You could just stand him up and never actually show up. It's like, oh, I'll be there in five minutes. Oh, sorry, we hit traffic. It's already been longer than five minutes, for sure. Angel was getting stitches. You never said when you would be there. Well, of course a lady has to get ready for a date. Well, yes, I put on a sun hat. I just don't know if there's a better use of our time at this point, and we do have questions that he might, you know... Men like to monologue when they're trying to be impressive. Oh, he does like to monologue. The second I woke up. That sounded wrong. Yeah. It's all right. Maybe on the ride over, we can figure out what we need to try and learn from him before I go and do this nonsense. Hmm? What do we need to know at this point? <laughs> well, you wanted to know what he was planning on doing today. I can try and ask. It would be helpful to know. I mean... He's obviously after something, and I don't think it's, you know, my rather impressive personality and physique. He's probably after something, but that means that he needs something or wants something, and once you figure that out, you can kind of figure out counter offers. The camera pans briefly back to Cole as... Cole, what are you doing while Angel's getting her stitches? Honestly, watching, observing, watching the stitches happening, Cole's been struggling a lot with feeling not responsible for people, but the feeling of not having control, not necessarily of his life, but of the ability to actually help anyone. He made a few phone calls. He says his jokes that potentially might make someone's day a little bit better, but any actual change has been minuscule as he's sitting there watching someone that's been shredded, be unshredded by needle and thread. So his insecurities are not brewing, but he's fully aware of them and feeling like he's not going to be able to help enough. So he's just kind of lost in thought watching the stitches happening. And it takes you a moment to realize that Rome is standing next to you. She's just been watching along with you and she just says, It's tough, isn't it? All the dangerous things out there in the world, there's only so much one person could do about any of it. How do y'all do it? Y'all been doing it this long and... I mean, you've had some success stories, and I mean, there's there's me, and he kind of smirks. How do y'all... How do y'all just keep trying whenever every day it feels like the night gets just that much darker? Well, to say that we've been at this for a long time is an understatement. Lydia and I have been trying to help improve things for a long time and there's only so much two people can do but it's 
sometimes you have to realize even a small change can make a big difference and it is hard, especially watching recent years. The world has always been messy, but in the past few months it's grown much, much darker than I expected and it's been hard to find hope, but sometimes you just have to find the little things you can do even if it doesn't make sense. Find those small things and you just have to hope that they'll be enough. And would you like to roll to figure someone out? Sure. And I will give you a plus one to that because this is your mom. Well, it's ten with plus one. I rolled a nine. What is Roma worried about? What is she afraid is actually going to happen? Her main concern outside of overarching stuff, like what is what keeps her up at night in this situation? So in the current situation, as she's talking and her eyes are getting that distant look like she's picturing something, you realize you've seen something like that look before us. Kind of like the look Cass got when she talked about the darkness that was coming. Roma is not an oracle per se, but you get the feeling she knows what could be coming for this world, and she's done what she can to stop it, but she's worried it might not be enough. You get the feeling it's like she knows her part's done, she just hopes it's enough for whoever is going, supposed to finish this. What was the first question again? I'm trying to find it in the sheet again. I can't find it. Who's pulling your character's strings? I want to ask that, but phrased in the sense of like, what is her motivation? Like, what's her driving string? Not necessarily like, I don't think she has someone pulling her strings, but... Not specifically a who, but a what? Yeah. So you've seen the amount of work they both put into helping people in and around Oak Ridge. You also know they do what they can to help people outside of the city. Yes, they may never leave, but they support things where they can. It's like they're fighting to make the world a better place. She and Lydia both will always give you the feeling that maybe they know a little bit more than they should. Could just come from the being immortal things you learn to recognize patterns, but it could be a little something else there. And her driving force is to basically find a way through this and find a way to get to as cheesy as it sounds, a brighter future than the one Oak Ridge and the rest of the world is currently facing if Cass's predictions are true. I guess I'll look back at her and... You know, Mom, I, I don't... I don't think I've ever said thank you enough for the basically the life you've, you've both offered me. I know it wasn't by choice for me to be here or it wasn't necessarily by choice for you to let me be here, but I'm not going to tell them, but I am terrified of <laughs> there's too many people throwing around words of like, oh, this could be the end. This could be it. I know you're not going to do this, and I especially know Lydia's not going to do this, but if push comes to shove, and it's truly it, I just want y'all two to forget everything and everyone and do whatever you can to be okay. And I know you're going to tell me just at being silly, but that's all I want. Well, first thing, what made you think we didn't choose you? I mean, you kind of just... You think anyone comes here by accident? Well, maybe not. She puts her arm around you. You weren't just put here, Cole. We chose... We've chosen with many, but we we did choose you. I don't want you to ever doubt that. And it is okay to be scared. This is a this is a scary situation, but I have some confidence that 
the pieces are lining up to where we may be able to see through to the other side of this. The other two, you might be able to hear at least part of this conversation, whether or not you're listening. Oh, Angel's completely oblivious to it all. She is stuck in her head, focusing on those vows, repeating them to herself out loud. I mean, it's more like a half-mumble whisper type thing, but out loud, over and over again. Millie hears what's going on, but she is, to all outward appearances, just focusing on, like, primping in a mirror, or, you know, rearranging the clothing as best as she can in a mirror. Hearing that from from Roma, Cole just has a smirk and says, you know, you know I love you, Mom, and I wouldn't choose to be anywhere else if I could, if I had a choice. But, uh, I guess Angel's about done over there, and, well, I guess it's time to go do the right thing. And just kind of laughs. Be careful, right? Always. And then he really laughs. The moment will come today. That's going to decide a lot of things. Just be brave. And to answer your question, as much as I know it make you feel better, Lydia and I aren't going anywhere. We have spent far, far too long trying to help this world to abandon it now. There's something like a bit of a weight to those words. I guess we better do everything we can to make sure there's a world to stick around for. I'm sure you will, just... And she gives you a kiss on the forehead. Okay, go on now. And be safe and take care of those two ladies, will you? <laughs> oh, I'm perfect, gentlemen. Cole stands up and kind of has the ring of keys on his finger, spinning it in circles, like, well, who wants some donuts? I love the look on Marion's <laughs> face. Oh yeah, Millie makes the most disgruntled and disgusted face. He starts walking to the garage, hot and fresh! Angel gingerly pulls on her leather jacket, settling it so it's not directly against the stitches. They put an extra layer of bandages on and like a sal a couple different salves to help prevent any you know normal infection or other infection yeah gotta be careful when it's wolves even if it wasn't like full transformation it is better safe than sorry that'd be a hell of an ending for angel end as a werewolf <laughs> <laughs> hear cole yell from in the car love it first krispy kreme let's go Mm. You all load up into the car and head to Mountain Hill Lake to have a date with the devil. Tempest Multi is a production of Pseudonym Social, changing reality one story at a time. It is an actual play podcast using Urban Shadows 2E Quick Start Guide, and it's set once again in the town of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I am your keeper and producer. Hello everyone, it's Casey again. I'll be playing Cass Pravda, the Oracle Playbook. My name is Zadkiel, or just Zad. In this game, I am going to be playing Windward Pudge, and they are using the Imp Playbook. Hi there, I'm Maria Perry. I'm playing Lily Elza, your local vampy vampire. I am Blaze, and I'll be playing Jason Madison Coleman, the Aware. Sup, y'all? I'm Panic Foxfire. I will be playing Hess, playing from the Book of the Wizard. Hi, I'm Gliza. I will be playing Kyle of the Tainted Playbook. I am Ava Rogers. I will be playing Angel Day, the Sworn. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.com.